I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to Tailgate Tales, a special series of the Southern Spirits podcast. Each week, we are talking about something fun from a school in the Southeastern Conference on the same day that they get to play football. So, which school are we talking about this week, Leah? This week, we're going to the University of South Carolina, All hence right. the chickens. Excellent. Well, South Carolina is playing Mizzou this week. I did not put what time they play. Oh, God. Let me see if I can do that real quick. But they're playing Mizzou. I'll just get back to that. How about that? And uh, let's see. We're going to go into our alcohol. Drinking the same thing. Going Coastal Pineapple IPA. Uh, Same thing as last week. Nothing fun there. It's okay. I like it. The tradition that we're going with this week is the Cockaboose Railroad. This is a really, really interesting tradition that I think you're going to like, Leah. Okay. That South Carolina does at their home games. This is from an article on Bleacher Report called uh, Ranking the Greatest All-Time Traditions in South Carolina Football History. All right. And I just copied... Is this number one? I don't even know. <laughs> if it's not number one, then you made a mistake. <laughs> I didn't I didn't do that. Well, it's what I liked yeah. that I was looking at. This is the entire entry from that article, okay? Okay. All right, quote. One of the more unique traditions in college football is the Gamecocks Cockaboose Railroad right beside williams Bryce Stadium. It all started around 1990 when a South Carolina fan hated the look of the rundown tracks right outside the stadium. He proceeded to clean up the tracks and place renovated cabooses on the tracks to create one-of-a-kind tailgating experience. I'm sorry. Create a -a one-of-a-kind tailgating experience. There are 22 cabooses in the Gamecock Railroad today and are considered some of the most luxurious tailgating you can have at a South Carolina football game. On the outside, they all look alike. The inside, though, is customized to each owner's taste and style. These units have all the amenities like big screen TVs, mahogany cabinets, heating and air, granite countertops, and anything else you can imagine. It truly is one of the coolest traditions at South Carolina and one any fan should see in person. End quote. So, what it is are like little campers for tailgating. They're private tailgating boxes. Yeah, and that's pretty awesome to me. With a roof deck, apparently. Look at that shit. Yep, and if you ask me, that's pretty freaking awesome. So I just feel like you would have to be incredibly wealthy to be able to have one of those things. Well, there are 22 of them, so yeah. You know, seems like they're few and far between. And uh, but there was this one guy that was like, "Oh, these rails are kind of ugly. I'm just gonna stick a fucking caboose there." Did he discuss <laughs> it with the university, uh, or was it a contract job, or was he just like one day, guys? Wait, I've got this great idea. Cabooses. Um, I do not have that information for you, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> just the way you I'm sorry <laughs> the way you gave the information or the way the article because i think you read it verbatim but i did um, correct it just was like if one set one regular fan was like oh this is ugly we need to fix this up y'all <laughs> Bring in the Fab Four and let's get to town. Pretty to much. Work. I don't know how many Fabs there are. There's, I've never seen know. that show. Uh, they play at 3 p.m. on Saturday. I finally mm. found it. Excellent. So there you go, all you South Carolina fans. Now you know when to watch the game because you didn't until just now. Mm. So mm-hmm. there you go. I'm going to edit up that audio, by the <laughs> way, live streamers, because it was rough at the beginning there. All right. Well, we now know about Cockaboose Railroad. I would love to go sit in just a uh, air conditioned camper and watch a game. It's a it's a caboose. Yeah, it's a camper. It's not really a camper though. It's a caboose. Mm. All right. What are we going to talk about this week, Leah? That caboose. I'm that sorry. That caboose though. <laughs> I really like the word caboose. A. <laughs> yeah, you do. Then cock caboose is funny. <laughs> Re- and in the picture, red handed Susie said tacos to your shirt, <laughs> and then she said the cockaboose sounds amazing. I agree. Right, I and love then it. like it's got the little. Is that an inflatable or is that the actual mascot? Uh, that would not be the mascot. I don't okay. think that looks inflatable to me. We're talking about our slideshow, everyone. Yeah, anybody that is uh, just audio only right now, you can go to YouTube.com when this comes out and look at the video. And I've got pictures of the cockaboo oh, railroad. Oh, actually, let me move this thing so you can see all the picture. <laughs> there you <laughs> there go. There we go. Anyway. I didn't realize I was blocking all of it. Here, we'll just go right here. For the rest of the episode. All well, right. No, what are we talking about, Leah? That's... <laughs> okay. I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it. There we go. <sighs> All right. So we're talking about the South Carolina State Museum. All right. Um, so the South Carolina State Museum used to be a textile manufacturing mill. Um, it was built in 1894, and it was huge, and tons of people worked there, and a lot of those people were children. 
Mm. Um, it was actually the first fully electric um, textile mill in the United States. So that's a big deal. It, mm-hmm. it produced tons and tons and tons of cotton textiles. Um, but the fact that it came along on the early you know, turn of the century, the regulations for workers were not great. Um, over 25% of the workforce was under the age of 16. Um, like it was rough conditions and I don't know if you've ever seen old video or like documentary footage of some of these old textile mills, but these machines were massive Mm -hmm. and they were running huge, huge floors of these weaving machines, spinning machines, all sorts of stuff. Um, and they didn't have a lot of safety regulations and there wasn't any safety, well, anything really on these, these machines. So a Great. lot of accidents were bound to happen. <laughs> um, a lot of You're accidents kidding. involving children. But that's not really what we're talking about because the South Carolina State Museum has basically a mascot ghost. Um, his name is Bubba. Oh, you want me to go ahead? Go ahead. All right. Um, his name is Bubba, and he used to work in the textile mill. Okay. Um, and that's the picture of the textile mill as it was, if you're watching the video, um, there on the right. Um, and so you can see it's just these huge open floors of just industrial machinery, and it's all electric. Um, and that, you know, lends itself to lots of dangerous stuff. But at any rate, Bubba was... We assume like a foreman, but it's never, no one can pin and say what this guy's name actually is. You know what I mean? Like there's no article that says. Says it right there. Well, yeah, of course. The bubble's what they call him, but I'm saying there's not like a person that they can pin this and say, hey, this is who this person was in life. This is just a spirit that the story has come down folklorically. There's no newspaper article associated with it or anything. Um, But this guy was uh, presumably a a foreman of some sort. Um, And they used to have a freight elevator to, you know, transport freight between floors. So Mm -hmm. you would start at the bottom, it would be, you know, cotton, and it would be, you know, uh, ginned out to get the seeds ready. Then, you know, you'd go up to spinning, and then you'd go from spinning to making the fabric itself weaving department, you know. So it was just to transport goods between floors. Well, this guy goes to the elevator and he's like, uh, where's that elevator at? <laughs> and he looks down the shaft thinking it should be below him because he's called it and he's waiting for it. Mm-hmm. Turns out it was above him. And oh, no. he has his head sticking into this elevator shaft looking oh, no. down towards the bottom and the elevator is coming for him straight from the top and it decapitates him. Oh, poor Um, Bubba. Yeah, so Bubba loses his head Mm -hmm. and lots of poor children are traumatized. (laughs) Um, And so they say that this Bubba ghost has been around ever since then. um, That he just shows up and he likes to hang around the elevator shaft that he got killed in a lot um i believe they say it's the third floor elevator and that elevator shaft is still functional they've just put a modern elevator in it Mm -hmm. um and they do the museum is like leans heavy into the ghosts they're really into it um so like costumed people will take you around and do tours and do ghost stories and stuff like that during the month of October. So if you're nearby it looks like an awesome experience uh their website has all of that information um But yeah, this guy apparently makes his presence pretty known around the museum. So he's really known to be... uh, So that elevator is one of the main elevators in the museum to go between floors. And he's pretty often seen as a full-bodied apparition. He will be just this dude. and, And apparently his ghost still has a head. I've not seen anything that says his ghost is headless. So I don't know where that's about. Maybe he smacked it back on in the afterlife. Yeah. I don't know. But he's walking around and he's this just a uh, sort of older to middle aged older man um, in overalls and boots. And just he walks onto the elevator with you, you know, as you're riding between floors. And as you get out, you realize he like, that he's not there anymore. He's one of those people that like throws his hand in right as the door is about to close. It's like, <laughs> wait a second. Wait. 
Thank God I caught the <laughs> elevator. It's like there are two floors in this fucking building, Bubba. <laughs> take the take goddamn the stairs. stairs. I was here on time. Like I do this all the time in my building. If the elevator's closing, I'm like, well, fuck it, I'll take the stairs. But if if I push the button and the elevator's there, I'll get on it. If it's not, I just walk off. But if it's there, I get on it. And without fail, someone always just hold on, hold on, and like. That's why when I get in, I immediately just hold the door close button. And I'm like, fuck y'all. I'm going on this elevator by myself. No, for real. Like, my building is only three floors tall. If you can't, like, just suck it up and take the stairs, Mm -hmm. like, are you even a person at that point? Like, I'm fat as hell and I don't take the elevator. Also, lots of people get stuck on that elevator. So Mm -hmm. that's more of a personal choice for me. But, like, yeah. Jamie said uh, about the head, uh, the ghost children sewed it back on. Oh, that's creepy. Now They I'm work in a textile nightmares. factory. They know how to fucking sew. They do, and they have the tiny little <laughs> fingers for the perfect little stitches. Uh, oh. oh, God. Uh, Kevin wants to see our faces. He said, okay. let me see that face. All right, you can <laughs> do like, that in a minute. Kevin, you can see our cocks in a moment. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so basically he is a creeper and he likes to hang out and like sort of just be in the elevator with someone and creepily disappear as they get off the elevator and they're like, where the fuck did that guy go? You know, he made such a big deal of catching the elevator. Um, yep. no, um, but then Good one, Leah. I'm sorry. I'm not funny. <laughs> I know I'm not. You um, are. You're very funny. I just like giving you a hard time. Yeah. It's you're very you're funny. Big. It's fun. Um, But yeah, and then a lot of other people, especially the people that curate the museum, have said that they've seen, like, just his boots and feet sort of behind other exhibits. So, like, they'll be walking one way, and it's before anything opens up, and they're the only people in the building or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they'll see him walking, but, like, just his bottom half. Um, walking behind like another exhibit or something like that. He hangs out on the third floor a lot around um, the exhibit of the HMS Hunley, which we need to do that story. It's the Confederate mm-hmm. submarine. That's a cool story. Yeah, um, I know about they it. They have a display of. there about that. So he hangs out around there, and then there's a, a, a exhibit of a schoolhouse that he likes to hang around, and he'll he'll ring the bell on the schoolhouse, being all creepy and shit. So. Hmm. Yeah, that's Bubba and the the museum there okay. in South Carolina. Next slide, which is just a by y'all with a big old cock on it. Big old cock. I can't get over saying cocks when we're talking about South Carolina. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> yep. Okay, well, that was fun. I enjoyed hearing about Bubba and his uh his missing head. Yep. Oh, man, that's enjoyable. Well... Um, everyone, we hope that y'all enjoyed it as well. Leah, did you enjoy telling it? So much. And how's your Bell's palsy doing today? Um, my update? face is moving a little bit more than it was. I mm-hmm. have a little bit more motion in my face. Um, it's still droopy as fuck. It looks like I had a stroke maybe a month ago. You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> progressing. I don't think that... <laughs> I don't think that's accurate at all. <laughs> Show everybody your laugh. Show them how you laugh, Leah. <laughs> Stop. Don't, don't do it. That's terrible. I shouldn't make fun of you. You're disabled. I'm not disabled. I just have permanent. <laughs> no, not permanent. Temporary, temporary yeah. facial paralysis. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's it's so But so I funny. can move my eyebrow more than I could yesterday. So yeah. I've kind of got a little... And that's real good when she's like and wanting something And it's delayed. From me. It's delayed though. So like I can. Oh. oh, so you're you're trying to move it now? Yeah. yeah, it's moving a tiny bit, just a little bit. Yeah, it's it's moving. So we're getting there. Yeah. Working back up to full facial features. It's gonna be great. Oh, uh, that's that's just wonderful. <laughs> God, <laughs> I had a stroke a month ago. I'm getting some movement back, <laughs> Leah. Goddamn. I'm sorry. I don't honestly know. <laughs> All I don't even the know what a fucking stroke. So. I don't even know what a stroke is. No, I I do know that. <laughs> I've known people that had them, but um, oh god, in a month they were all better. Oh, it took her a good six months, but she's there fine. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, that's enough on the uh, audio here. That was enjoyable. Um, y'all come hang out with us tomorrow for the main episode and on the live stream of Midweek Minis. And don't forget that we live stream this show on Wednesday. Both of those can be found on Twitch. 
and check out the YouTube video for this if you're listening to it. And uh, yeah, I hope the video gets edited on, on this as well, Leah. Not going to happen. <laughs> Oh, man, that's going to be great to watch. Jesus. All right, y'all. Well, we will see you next time. Bye, y'all.